All right, to start off with tonight, I'm sorry there's been a bit of a delay, but if you recall, I removed a jumper from here, and I have a 10K jumper going from here to here. The reason the jumper was to here is because that 10K jumper is supposed to connect in, I believe, right here. I will double check, but I realized it after the fact that the 10K, I'll, I'll throw the overlay up here on the screen uh, so you'll see it, but there is supposed to be the high voltage coming down to here, and then the 10K jumper jumpers over into the input, which I believe is this one right here. So if we go, I'm gonna cut in front of the screen for a second. If we look at the schematic, the 10K comes from this point and connects to this the um, drain, uh, which then connects over to a 4.7 microfarad off to the t potentiometer, which is this one here. So that one, oh, that almost, I almost think that needs to come up to this guy, if I'm looking at that right. Let me look at that again. The drain, yeah, the drain is up here on the top. So I have to connect one end of this to there, and one end of it to here, and then a jumper between those two. So I'm going to have to pull that guy, figure out how to carefully run that resistor around without touching anything, and and so forth. So I'm going to get the uh, the thing soldered and, and fixed and then the next step we're gonna do tonight is to actually start looking at trying to place things in the chassis so uh, first thing though first is gonna be to get that pulled and fixed so we'll start with that There we go. All right, that board is now correct. So I'm going to reset my um, self up so that we can look at the inside top down view of this and we should be good to go. So I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so if you can kind of see now what's going on, I now have everything kind of, I'm trying to just place them in the general area to get a feel in my head about where things are going to go, to make sure it looks like everything will work. And in my case, it does look like it will. I've got, over here, I've got the, um, this is gonna be the power supply for the, um, oh, what do you call it? The, um, this will be the voltage doubler, basically, that does send over to the relays. So, and also I put this here, but I think really my power filtering is gonna need to go over just a little bit more this way, um, because I've got, to also put this little guy it's going to go in here um, because you know that will connect over I'm trying to think of the best way to, to, to get to this though is I think I'm trying to think if it will be better this way because this guy will send um, two leads over to here and then one that will go to ground for the 6.3 volts that connects into this guy and what I'll likely do is uh, get a sense of where that's going to go, but I think so. But basically, I'm going to put this here. These two will connect into the same points that these two are connecting into. Oh, white goes right here to the the phase switch. Now, these ground switches generally are not considered um, specifically very amazingly safe. There is a cap underneath it going to ground. I think I can see down there. Yeah. Um, so I'll possibly take this out and remove it because having a grounding selector switch was is not really safe. I could potentially get a specific kind of cap in there, but I think in all in all, I don't like the idea of having it there. So I'll just possibly detach that completely. Um, but part of it yeah, connects over to the fuse. So I'll effectively probably I've just got to kind of figure out how I'm going to reattach this three-prong cord correctly and adequately. 
Um, one of the things I also don't like is the three-prong cord is connected to the transformer bolt, which is also considered by many to be a significant no-no. So I will likely also look to um, drill a hole somewhere here in the chassis and ground mount that a little bit more safely. So I'm going to have to get in here and detach that and readjust it a little bit. Um, but now we can see the layout of this is looking like it's going to be pretty close. Um, the only possible issue I'm trying to figure out now is I've got the bias pot here. I could move it over here closer to where the actual layout picture shows it, but I think that since the hole's already tapped and it fits there, I think I'll leave it as is and I just may have to run some kind of longer wires between here and there to get it connected into the bias. We have the bias um, voltage stuff coming right here that would then connect into it and then it over. So, uh, in fact, I got to look at that quickly on the schematic. Well, I'll potentially talk to you about that here in a second as well. But the bias is right here. It basically goes, um, I've got to check. I think that is a 10K. Turn this over to resistance. I'm going to take this off. So I believe, hopefully, if this is correct, we have a 10K pot. Yep, 10K. Um, and then the ground of it will go to, uh, is this a 27K? That's a 15K, so I'll possibly have to replace that one. Unless this was it. Is this it, maybe? That's a 72K. So I'll have to look at the old bias circuit, but there's a couple of resistors here that are different on that. The, the pot itself that exists will work. It's a 10K pot. So, um, so yeah, um, I've got a 3.3K resistor that will come in from the bias tap, which I believe is this one. I took a picture, so I'll know. So this is going to effectively go in and solder into that point. Um, we will then... So probably part of what I'll do is I can actually, just right now, correctly solder in the things that I need to into here, like this one into here, and these two into here, and then kind of cl cleanly trim things off on the bottom after those are soldered in. And then that will allow me to sort that out. But I also need to mark my drill points and get that sorted. So, um, but all in all, I guess I'm, I'm kind of talking ahead of where I'm gonna be. I need to, before I start putting boards in place permanently, I need to sort out this part uh, to make sure I know where I can mount that correctly. So I will be kind of pulling things back out now, and then we'll go back to starting to get the chassis itself prepped. I may have to pull out all of the potentiometers. I have to double check and see. Some of them are going to be the values I need, some won't. Um, but I'll go through that part, and whatever won't, I will then get a different pot that I have some on standby in case I need those. So I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so I've mounted this transformer. I've also removed and desoldered and removed the ground selector. I also really don't like standby switches. In this particular amp, they do use a standby, but I've never been a fan of standby. Um, standby is not mute, uh, and I'm not got a tube rectifier on this. It's gonna be solid state rectified. But a lot of people have this false idea that with tube guitar amplifiers, you need to have a standby switch. If you want it as a mute, that's fine. I don't believe it's really that needed. You could actually turn the volume down, or you could ask for an amp builder to put a mute switch in, which would really actually just send the signal to ground somewhere so that it no longer comes out the speakers. Um, but you do not need to have one to quote unquote protect the amp. So uh, that's that's a complete fallacy. Um, in fact, standby switches in some situations can harm things in the amp. So, but at any rate, so I'm going to, basically I've got the white lead here that goes into the power transformer and I will connect that to this part. And I will also take one of these leads and connect that to that part, and we'll basically connect those together. Um, and then the other lead of this will connect to the black, and I don't, oddly enough in this one, I don't seem to have a, it's just two black wires, but we're just gonna need, it needs 120 volts sent into it to send out the 6.3 volts on the other half. So, um, so effectively, then this will connect in with, uh, into my fuse. Uh, which goes into the power switch, and then the power switch goes into the transformer. So um, so this switch will just be the only thing that kind of sends power in and out. And I will 
I also want to connect the other lead of this to that same side of the, of the switch that the power transformer is hooked into as well, so that it is also, in theory, fused in the same thing. So, um, at any rate, um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that part now. I'm going to first find and get a... I took the ground lead off, and I'm going to ground to uh, instead... Actually, this is pretty dirty looking. I'm going to ground somewhere over here, uh, possibly just drill a new hole over here somewhere that I'll use for that, but we'll get to that that earth in a little bit as well. So, um, I also am going to be taking this out right now, while I'm thinking about it, because there's no need for a standby in this guy. And what I'll be able to use for this switch instead is there is a slide switch that this does have that, in the slide, in this case, I'll just probably make it a, a regular a dual pole, dual throw type switch. But this is gonna be instead the half power switch. Now this switch won't work for that because it does need, if you've seen the pictures, I'll show you the picture of this here in the overlay. It is a special type of switch that basically will switch um, between, sorry, I'm getting text messages. We'll switch between uh, some 10K resistors into a, um, into a LED that basically will draw, make it impossible for those to be grounded and they will power off two tubes or those two tubes will then go directly to ground. So you effectively are able to uh, quiet that to ground. So that's what I'll be putting into that slot is a switch that will do that. Um, what else? So uh, I'm just trying to think of what I need to do next. This is kind of the fun part sometimes is trying to th figure out. I want to get this chassis all prepped first before I can start dropping other things in and doing things with it. So um, technically at this point, because I've got the power stuff hooked up, I should probably try and finish that. So I will go ahead and do that. Uh, I didn't show the previous steps as well of drilling and stuff because I've seen me, you guys have seen me doing that. So I'll just save a little bit of time in the videos to get to the nitty gritty of explaining what's being connected and how. So next up will be me having completed the connections of all this stuff and I'll show you where we're at with that in a bit. All right, some days it feels like I get a lot done, other days it feels like I get nothing done. But so far I have attached in the power here and redone the power there. I did drill a small hole and, and do my tap there. I've got these guys bound together um, with some cover up and, or I mean some uh, shrink wrap and whatnot. And then I'll be able to kind of tuck those now down here out of the way. This power is a little bit in the way, but uh, being that this is the noisy side anyway, we're okay. I've got that connected into the same power switch here for the one half of it. The other half of it comes into the, um, uh, the same place as the white neutral side. And that will power this transformer as well, which will then put out 6.3 volts here, which will connect in over here. But we'll get to that. Uh, I think that's going to be about all I've got in me tonight. To the next video, we will be connecting these two to the power board. These two will go to the uh, high voltage side and this will go to the bias side uh, this is the faraday cage and this will be the center tap that will just need to go to ground which i might just connect them to this ground here uh, but we'll we'll see about that um so we're making good progress on getting the chassis ready and hopefully just within another a couple of episodes here we'll have this thing put together and we'll be able to test it out so thanks everybody uh keep me posted on what you think about the build progress and uh we'll hopefully have a pretty amazing app at the end Please give me a like, a thumbs up, and a subscribe, as that is always welcomed.